Hello, Namaste. Auntie Zarna here. Today's podcast episode of the Zarna Garg Show is a very special episode because this episode is for you from me. Forget my family because you know they're very distracting and they're not even that fun. Like you'll see, you're going to have a lot more fun just you and me alone because this is going to be about how you can unstuck your life, how you can do things that you never thought you were going to do. I'm going to answer questions that you guys ask me all the time on the road, online, on YouTube, when I go live. These are the things that <clears throat> I get asked all the time and I want to answer them. Because if I can help one person move along in their journey of life, I mean, why else am I doing this? You know, I got to find a way to monetize it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the biggest question I get is how I made this career pivot at 40 something. And I'm going to answer that in the most honest way that I know. Number one, I didn't realize I was 40 something. That's the truth. I was so buried under the weight of the kids and the diapers and the formula that I don't know where the years went. And I think for a lot of you, it's like that. You wake up one day and you're like, oh my God, I'm 40 something. And that's how I was. But it was a passing moment of realizing my age and then it didn't matter anymore. Why should we fixate on the number anyway? It's irrelevant. Whatever you want to do, do it now. Even if, let's say, let's say you're 80 something and you're like, it's too late. Why is it too late? Even at 85, 88, 90, you should be living every day that you have to its fullest extent because it's your day and life has given you this day so squeeze as much juice out of it as you can and I was like okay I'm 40 something it's fine it's not a big deal I'm just gonna go and do what I can at 40 something which is I can milk my life experiences which a 20 year old doesn't have so the 20 year old kids out there who are doing comedy about all the birthday gifts their moms and dads didn't give them like, good luck to them on that journey while I talk about my trauma, talk about my parenting trauma and in-law trauma. And you know what? Because I stuck to my authentic voice and I stuck to what was real for me, it started resonating with everybody who was watching it. Because I will tell you one thing, and this is a secret. I think it's a top tip. You should write it down if you can. Even through the wires, through the lenses, through the camera, through the web, through bad Wi-Fi connections and all of it, the audience knows the truth and can feel it. So when I started making jokes about how horrible my mother-in-law is, everybody knew I wasn't lying and everybody felt a little empathy for me. And I'm sure you're feeling it right now. Like my blood pressure, actually, like if, is there a blood pressure thing around? Because it actually is rising just thinking about her right now. That's the effect she has on me. But the key that you need to remember is that whatever you want to do, you may not want to be an influencer or a digital creator or a comic. You may want to be a cook or a stylist or an accountant or whatever. But if you do it with an authentic, real passion, like you really want to do this, believe that people are going to know. Because in life, here's a big statistic of success, because I'm nothing if I don't have statistics for you, like, of course. And they're very real statistics. Like, they came up from, like, a whole focus group and all that. Focus group of one, but so what? It's my own personal focus group. Here's the statistic. If you, if you care about what you're doing, you're in the top 20% of people doing something whatever it is, because 80% of people doing whatever it is that they're doing just don't give a shit about what they're doing. So if you just care about doing a good job, you're already in the top 20% of the thing. Then if you really care about winning, like not just doing it, but winning and have an organized system to turn it into a business, you will be in the top 10% because a lot of people care about what they're doing, but then they have no plan. And when I say plan, I don't mean like some highfalutin Harvard Business School plan. No one needs that. That's garbage. Like throw two on Harvard Business School plans because those plans just intimidate the shit out of normal people. You don't need all that. You just need to sit down with a piece of paper and one pen and be like, what do I want to do? What is my skill? And how can I monetize that skill? Who will pay me money so that I can sell this skill? This can happen for anybody. You could be like, I want to start a cooking business. I want to be a photographer. Do you know how much people need a photographer who can do a good job? Everybody needs a photographer and you don't even need the, the expensive 
equipment that um, we're shooting this on right now is very expensive. So we're not talking about this. But like, you can start with your iPhone. If you even agree to follow like a creator around and just document their journey, you can start with something that small and make money with it and learn how to advance in that. So here's the thing, you care about what you're doing, now you're in the top 20% of the thing, people who are doing it. You care about making it a business, now you're in the top 10% of the people who are doing the thing that you wanna do. And then what brings you to the top one or 2% of who's doing it? That is the X factor that you cannot control. You can give everything the absolute best that you can and do it with a good positive intention. And after that, have faith. Because there is a, the role of faith in this cannot be overstated. Some things are luck, some things are destiny. But if you're doing something with all your heart, you're putting everything you have in it, you have a little bit of a plan how you're going to do it, have faith that God will take you to the next step. If you don't believe in God, because I know we're in that world right now, you're atheist, you're not atheist, you're semi-atheist, whatever your deal is, a higher power will help you because the universe wants to help people who helps themselves. I believe that for sure. Because when you are putting that energy out into the world that I want to do this, and just say it. Just say what you want to do. You don't need to hide. You don't need to be embarrassed. So what if you fail? That's another thing I get a lot. Don't you get scared? What if you fail? No, because no one cares. Everybody is so busy being self-obsessed. It's the best part of living in this social media generation. No one gives a shit. Everybody is looking at their own selfie for the 1500th time. You can like start something and fail every day. Try something new every day and you can keep going until you find your thing. No one has the time or energy to worry about what you do. And you know what? If, if somebody has the time and energy to judge you, you know, they're, they're like not even making good selfies of, them, of themselves. Are you really gonna take their words seriously? You cannot let anybody stop you. You just go do your thing, whatever it is, with honest intention, make a little plan. Like, honestly, forget the Harvard Business School and like all these business school people with the big business books, you don't need that. But a simple thing is a SWOT analysis, and I'm sure you guys have heard about this, S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's just a grid. You sit with one piece of paper and a pen and you think, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Where is the opportunity to monetize this? And what are the big threats? It's that simple. Once you have that grid, it will become clear to you. Your strengths, you focus all your time and energy on playing to your strengths, whatever it is. If you're an amazing cook, spend your time cooking. If your weakness is marketing, hire somebody who can market for you. If your weakness is the camera work, the filming, the documenting, the organizing, if you're like a dentist and you're like, I'm just suck at organizing the dental office stuff, hire somebody to do that. But once you have it on a piece of paper in black and white in front of you, you will know with clarity what you need to do. What are your opportunities? Is there an underserved market? Is there a digital media space out there that doesn't have that many comics? I can give you one, OnlyFans. Comics doing really well on OnlyFans. I know you're all laughing. I know you're all laughing. But in between the guys who are looking for foot fetishes and the women who are looking for aging uncles, believe it or not, there are comedians making money on OnlyFans right now because they saw an opportunity and they were like, why not? And really, why not? You just put the jokes in there. Even in between all that porn and whatever else people watch, they're like, oh, that was a good joke. You know? <laughs> Everybody likes to laugh. So the, it can be that simple is what I'm saying. Then a common question I get is, um, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. I've got you. Even I didn't know what to do. I'm a serial failed entrepreneur. Before I did comedy, I failed at every business I tried. I have so many failed businesses, it's embarrassing. I had a disposable toothbrush and toothpaste business that failed so hard. Then I got stuck with thousands and thousands of disposable toothbrush and toothpaste. For five years, I've been giving them out every Halloween. Because I like, I don't know what to do. And the kids stop coming to my door. They're like, she's the really scary lady. You get Colgate tubes with her. But I tried it, it failed, it didn't work. I even spent some money because truthfully, to start anything, you're gonna have to invest something. 
You're gonna have to invest your time. You're gonna have to invest your money. That's life. Nothing in life comes for free. But if you ask yourself, you're probably pissing away money on 10,000 things that you don't need to be pissing them on that you could collect and be like, I'm gonna put it towards this lesson or learning how to do this. You know what? If you don't know what to do, I'll give you a tip right now. If you don't know what to do at all, if you're like, I don't know what to do, but I wanna do something that makes me money and I'm willing to learn, I will tell you right now, if you take two or three free YouTube courses on how to do video editing, you will make money by the end of this month. I guarantee you that. Because video editing is so in demand. Everybody needs a video editor. And no one knows how to do it. Like so many of us digital creators like me, moms and uncles and aunties who are out there making videos of all kinds, we don't know how to edit our videos. We're begging editors to help us. And it's a cash business. You can learn it for free on YouTube. Another business I'll tell you, how to organize things. So many of us working now all the time, we go home to our homes, it's a disaster. We would pay somebody to come and help us organize our homes. If that's your thing, that's your thing. Food, don't even get me started. Healthy, nutritious food and homes, family style is a huge crisis all over America for sure because we have no help. My own home, my kids end up ordering out all the time because I don't know how to fix it. I work, I'm traveling all the time. But if I could find somebody who's like, you know what, three times a week, we will give you this healthy, nutritious, protein-filled filled meal, I would actually book that person right away and, and make that their business happen. So there are so many businesses out there. Think of a problem that you would be happy to solve and try to solve it. And what's the worst that's gonna happen? You don't solve it, it goes nowhere and then the next day, believe me, the next day the Kardashians will have a wedding and no one's going to care what you did. They're going to drop like a panty line and then Ben Affleck's going to get into a fight with J-Lo and he's going to look grumpy and everybody's attention is going to be all divided and you can go back to living your life and taking another chance. No one cares if you fail. I mean, the biggest players in the world fail all the time. No one cares. The only thing anybody remembers is that, is that they got back up because... Everybody, it's a human tendency to love a great success story, to love a great comeback story. I mean, Sylvester Stallone still making Rocky. Why do you think he's doing that? Why do you think he's doing that? Because everybody wants to see a success story, the guy who got beat and then he came back. And you can be your own success story. You don't have to be Rocky. Like, don't go running up and down those stairs. That's a lot of work. Just start a business, try something. Um, and, and the number one way to find what you should be doing is reflecting on what you're already doing. Like people think it has to be, oh, now the latest, it has to be AI, it has to be technology. If that's not your thing, that's not your thing. Like things are getting invented every day, new things are getting invented that are everyday use items. The scrub daddy, the sponge, if you've seen it, it's, it's, it's a sponge that cleans pants that's cut in the face of a sh it's the, in the shape of a face that's a billion dollar business there ain't no ai attached to it somebody looked at a, at a rectangle sponge and said why don't we make it round and put two eyes and a smile and that thing became a billion dollar product don't get caught up in what is the latest and the greatest just think what is something that everybody in this world is using that i'm also using that maybe i can improve a little bit better um, what's another product? What's another product, Mike? Um, there's so many. The Squatty Potty. Oh my God. Another Shark Tank product. I'm thinking Shark Tank products because they're on my mind right now. Where like literally it's helping people poop because it creates a little step stool in the bathroom. It, it solved a problem. And that guy who created it is a gazillionaire because, and the blanket with sleeves. It can be that small. It doesn't have to be AI. If AI is your thing, go do the AI thing. I have a daughter who's trying to learn computer science and you know, I'm like, I'm really like after her life to learn because I don't know any, but I would like for my kids to learn. Like if I'm going to pay for this expensive degree, like learn something good. Um, but it, it may not even be their thing. My daughter loves yoga, for example. She's a yogi. She loves yoga. And I have seen her enjoy doing yoga so much that now I'm like, you know what, forget AI. Do something in the yoga space. Share your love with the whole world. What the world really needs is a person who cares about what they like and then are willing to share it. 
If you don't know how to make money, let's say you're like, I don't know how to charge for this. I feel shy. I feel embarrassed. Okay, I got a solution for you also. If you feel shy, you feel embarrassed. Don't worry about charging money at first. Do it for free. Do it as a service. Get in the flow of doing it. Because once you get in the flow of doing it and you do it for one person and you do it for another person and you do it for a third person, by the fourth person, you will learn to say, you know what, I'm happy to do this, but I can't do it for free because it's a lot of time and I care about it a lot. And so here is what it will cost. And before you know it, you will be on your way to starting your own business. It's that simple. Don't let anybody intimidate you. And don't be stopped with this idea of who's going to help me, who's going to open the door for me. No one's going to help you. It's no one's responsibility to help you. It's your responsibility to help you. It's your responsibility to get yourself going. So what happens is that when you create your own momentum, that attracts other people with their momentum. Because energy attracts energy. Everybody wants to be around a person who's doing something themselves because they too are looking for inspiration. I work with some of the biggest comics in the world, like the big, actually the biggest, like not even some of the biggest, the biggest. And even they love when they're working with a person who's helping themselves. Because believe it or not, even when they're legends, they too benefit from the energy of the people that work with them. They don't want to be sitting there and just answering questions all day. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you open this door? That's not fun for anybody, let alone for the most famous people out there. They're so sick of people asking them for favors. But if you do an incredible job and you bring positivity to their table and you offer them more positivity, they're so used to a life of being surrounded by takers that when somebody comes in and actually gives them something, they like become mush. They're so grateful. And that's my experience of working with the biggest names in comedy. So think, what can you do that you can do with so much joy that wherever you go, people would be excited. Oh my God, you bake that? We can't believe it. We can't wait to try it. Or whatever your thing is. You clean those teeth? That's the cleanest looking teeth we ever saw in our lives. No, there are people who have clean teeth fetish. Like it's a thing. It's a th I know, Mike, you're laughing. It's a thing, there's actually people like that. But the point is that no one's gonna come and help you and it's not anybody's job to. There's no need to be in self-pity mode over it. Everybody is busy fighting their own lives. And then also, please remember, note to you as I had to make note to self. My friend once told me, my friend Divya Gugnani, who started Wander Beauty Company, once told me, she said, Zarna, do you really think somebody is gonna come to 85th Street where you live and find you and give you work? She's like, you think the world has nothing to do besides coming to your home, knocking on your door and saying, can we give you more work? No, you have to go out there and throw yourself at every opportunity. Every shot that you can take, just take it. Throw yourself at every possibility. Volunteer possibility, sure, why not? Money-making possibility, sure, why not? When you're getting started, you need so much combustive energy. You know when your rocket ship goes up, you see all those fumes that help it go up? There's a reason that combustion exists because it takes all that energy to get something off the ground. But the good news is that you control how much energy you have in your own tank because you can do so many different things. You can do free stuff, you can do charitable stuff, you can do stuff on social media, you can do stuff in real life. Whatever makes you comfortable and gets you started, put that one foot ahead of the other one and get started. And believe that once you enter the ecosystem of the thing, whatever the thing is that you want to do, others will get attracted to you and want to do it. Let me take a pause for a minute because I've been talking and talking. I don't even know how long I was talking. Uh, almost like 20 minutes. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's, almost, it's about four. Oh my God. Like Oh my God, I think, is this even helpful to you guys? Because the camera is still rolling. I think it's like, I, I hope, I don't know. Otherwise, it's going to be the world's lowest rated podcast episode. It's going to be like Zara is doing a TED Talk and I don't even know what the TED Talk is about because it's all a rambling thing. But it's not, it's not. I hope that I'm helping you. I hope that in me, you see a person who's like, if she can do it, I can do it. Because truly, it's true. 
there's nothing special about me. I, I just keep doing things. I keep falling, I keep failing, and I keep getting back up. That's it. And why do I do it? Why? You need to know your why, because I know my why. I do what I do because I've been through a lot in life. That is the advantage of starting something at 40 something. You've lived a little. At this age, I know I'm not gonna change anybody's mind. I know no one's actually gonna listen to me, not even my kids, <gasps> even though I try so hard. And nothing is gonna matter as much as money matters. It matters. What you do for money matters, how you make money matters. Money is the only thing that gives you safety and protection in this world. God knows every day we think it couldn't hit a new low and then we get lower with humanity. As you guys know, I'm sure, I don't even know when this episode will air, but I can at this point pretty much guarantee that something new will have happened by then because that's just how, where we are in this world. Money matters, the only, so I had to clear, I had to create some clarity for myself. What is it that I want to do and why am I doing it? Because I don't feel safe unless I'm working and making money. My number one objective is to secure myself and my family because until I'm secure, I can't help anybody else. That's just the truth. I mean, I don't want to be out there being an activist for 10 causes while my own needs are not met. That's not how it works. The first thing you have to do is secure yourself, secure your family, and then you can do 10 other good things in this world. That's my why. You have your own why, and I'm telling you the why can be as simple as I need the money. It's okay to say that. You know, sometimes people ask me, they're like, what drives you? I'm like, is this a trick question? I mean, the money drives me as it drives everybody else. And especially as women, we have to be okay with saying those words. There's nothing bad about it. That everybody needs money to live in this world. Guess what? Even housewives who are married and stay-at-home moms need money to live. You, we cannot live in a world where we bury our heads in the sand. No matter what your circumstances, let's say you're lucky enough, you have a husband who makes a lot of money and you don't need it today, but you don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring. You could have like a really shitty mother-in-law who moves in with you the way mine threatens to do with me. And then guess what? You're going to need a lot of money to have somebody deal with her drama so you can continue to live freely your own life. The point is that we have to be okay with saying that we need money and that's okay. Or whatever. If you actually have a higher purpose, which I can't even imagine because I'm that basic. But if you have a higher purpose, go lean on that. I'm not opposed to it. I just don't know what it could be. You know what I mean? I'm so broke and poor at all times because I've got three kids. That's a whole another trauma. But... Um, I think care about what you're doing, be willing to take tons of chances, fail every day, who cares? You know what, actually make a YouTube channel about all the things you're failing at. For all I know, that could be a big hit. Because people want to be inspired. People want to see that other people are taking chances and failing at it. No, I'm not kidding. I know you guys might be rolling your eyes. I'm actually not. If you made a YouTube channel that says, here's all the things I failed at, I guarantee you people would be wanting to watch it. Because internet and social media is so filled with people who only proclaim victories. And we all know that that's not true. We all know that behind every victory, there's a thousand failures, but no one wants to make videos about that because that's embarrassing. So guess what? That's a white spot waiting to be picked. Anybody who's willing to do that, I should do that. I should make a video about all the things I failed at. I'll tell you another thing I failed at. I was a matchmaker for a hot minute. I was so bad at it. Uh, matchmaking is the world's worst job. You might think, oh, find people love and happiness. Oh no, that's not the job. The job is more to be the therapist of women and their parents. Because generally 90% of the clients for a matchmaker are women, because the guys don't care. That's the truth. And then it's, it's this whole battle that you have to have with them and, and generally often even with their parents because they'll be like, well, you know, she's a catch and you have to be the one saying, I'm sorry to tell you, not a catch. If she was a catch, she would have been caught. 
but you don't want to say that because that's like bad for business so you have to say it in like nicer ways you know what i mean but th- i'm just listing another very bad business that i tried and 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 there are amazing matchmakers out there and guess what they get it done there are really incredible amazing matchmakers out there who have figured out how to do it and be productive and and move on with it so that they should be doing that hang on just one second hi hi, hi. thank you thank you thank you thank you yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I have to run in a sec. This yeah. Is okay, yeah. Anyway, so this has been the mess. Very, very, very fun video. I hope you got some value out of it. Um, we usually end every podcast episode with a segment titled Good Grades with Gargs. But because there's only one garg in this video, you can feel free to give me a grade for this video. You can give me an A. You can give me an A+. Plus. I'll even take an A-. minus. I'm not so picky. No, I'm being honest. In the comment section, tell me what grade you think this video deserves and what questions I left unanswered because I want to answer them all for you. And good luck getting unstuck in life and moving forward. I want to see so many success stories coming out of this video. I'm rooting for you. Namaste.